Hello and welcome to part 27 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.6. In this video we're going to be talking about a new feature, a new modifier in Blender called the Remesh Modifier. As of today, February 9th, 2012, this actually isn't a part of Blender yet. It's a part of the next version, Blender 2.62, which isn't out as of today, but it'll be out in the forthcoming version, probably by the end of February 2012. Um, the reason why the remesh modifier is needed in Blender is because of objects like this, which is the result of the Boolean modifier. In my last video, part 26, I talked about how to use the Boolean modifier, uh, so I'll put a link up on the screen right now. Basically, the Boolean modifier allows you to use two shapes. In this case, I used a cube and a cylinder, and I used the cylinder to cut a hole out of the cube. That's great, except it leaves a bunch of triangular faces, and having triangular faces on a mesh is not ideal, because they are harder to work with, and they result in bad smoothing when you add um, the subsurf um, modifier, which smooths out an object. So really, ideally, you would not want any triangular faces, especially all coming together to the same point, which is in this case happening eight times, um, in your mesh at all. So, how do we fix this? Well, uh, the remesh modifier isn't in Blender 2.61 yet, but you can actually preview it right now. Or if you have Blender 2.62, if you're in the future, um, you can take a look at that too. If you go to Blender's website, www.blender.org, you can actually preview versions of Blender that haven't come out yet, what their current development stage is. If you go up to the top bar and click on Development, it talks about the future projects of Blender, so you can read about what's coming out in the f uh, upcoming versions. But there's also a link that says, get the latest test builds from Blender SVN here. SVN um, means basically the current development project. Um, they build, they compile, and make a new version of Blender uh, quite regularly. Uh, so if you click on this link, it will take you to a very simple download page of fairly regular uh, builds of Blender that haven't even come out yet that incorporate new features of Blender. So you can choose your appropriate version uh, for Mac or PC, 64-bit or 32-bit, depending on your system. Um, now, the difference between when you download one of these versions and when you download the official release is that these versions do not actually have an installer. When you download them to your folder or your, to, your, to your computer, they will just come out as a zip file or possibly just a folder and you can just run them right out of the folder. You don't have to use an installer and install them. You can just you run them right out of a folder. So this is the, uh, the folder that I downloaded, and I extruded it from a zip, or extracted it from a zip file. And so I'll just run blender.exe. And this is just a newer version with more features than the normal version of Blender 2.61. I'm going to go ahead and create, um, the, or use the Boolean modifier again. So I'm going to add a cylinder. And we'll scale it down on the x and y axes and scale it up on the z axis. And I'm going to use the Boolean modifier again. Again, if you haven't seen that video, uh, part 26 in my series, go ahead and check that out. I'm back here. Um, and we're going to use the difference operation to cut a hole through the um, cube. And we're going to choose the cylinder to be that shape of the hole. I'll press apply and delete the cylinder and we have a wonderful cube with a hole in it. Um, now because we're using the new version of Blender, this test build, it could be potentially buggy. That's one of the things about downloading a test version. It's like a beta in between different versions. Um, so it's not necessarily reliable. It's not necessarily the version that you'll want to use, but you get to test out the new version or the new features of Blender before it actually comes out with the new version. Okay, so the new modifier that is in this version, that's not in Blender 2.61, is the remesh modifier. Um, but before I go ahead and add it, you actually won't find that in the uh, in your current 2.61. I'm going to go ahead and, and turn on the display of my edges. Okay, so we can see what's happening a little bit better. And we're going to go ahead and add the remesh modifier. As soon as I add it, you're going to see it entirely re recalculate. In other words, entirely figure out a different way of building the exact same mesh, approximately, using a different layout of vertexes. You'll remember that with the previous version, uh, or without the modifier applied, we had all these triangles coming out to the, f the four corners on the top and bottom. But with the remesh modifier uh, applied, 
we will actually have an entirely different mesh. It's actually a lot cleaner. And all of the faces, all of the flat surfaces, are square entirely. So it's a much, much better mesh, although there are some um, efficiency issues as well here. Um, it did recalculate the entire top and the entire bottom, which was great. And we can adjust how accurate it is by sliding um, this oct tree depth in the modifier options. So if we make that higher, it'll make a denser mesh and make it more uh, accurate to how it was before. Um, and we can adjust the scale. So we can scale it down to make it simpler. Again, if you make it too simple, or you change the, or you lower the value of the oct tree depth, um, you won't get as round of a hole because it's going to simplify it just to fewer edges and faces. But you can choose how detailed you would like it. When you are happy with the result, you can press apply, and you now have a much better mesh than you would have had if you had just stuck with the result of the Boolean modifier. One more example. This is actually probably a more common one. I'm going to go ahead and press Shift C to get my cursor back in the middle. I'm going to add some text. So Shift A to add an object or add a mesh. We're going to add a text object, which is actually not a mesh yet. It's going to it's just a special text object. Into edit mode with tab, I can delete then and retype. I'll just type CG. Um, maybe with the text um, options in the properties window. I can make my uh, font a little bit more bold, like it is in my logo. And I'm going to convert this to a mesh, because it's still a text object. It's still I can still make new characters in it. It's not a mesh yet. So if I press, I believe it is Alt-C for convert to. I'm going to convert, um, I'm going to turn it into a mesh from uh, a curve, meta, surf, or meta, or surf, or text. So we're converting from a text to a mesh. And now I can go into edit mode, and it'll show me all of the very, very, very ugly um, faces, the triangular faces. I'm going to go ahead and select all of the faces and extrude up to make it 3D text. I could have done that before I turned it into a mesh as well in the text options. Um, and so we have our mesh, but of course it's very, very ugly on the top and bottom. Of course, though, using the remesh modifier, um, I can make my geometry a whole lot nicer. I'm going to go ahead and make my wire, um, well, my edges show up better before I go ahead and add the remesh modifier. And we'll add the remesh modifier. And my C disappeared, but my G stayed. And as you can see, the geometry is a whole lot more efficient. And it's made up entirely of four cornered or four sided um, faces. Now, in the options for the remesh modifier, there's a little checkbox that says remove disconnected pieces, and that's why the C disappeared. So I will uncheck that, and the C comes back. Sometimes if you have a whole lot of, a whole string of letters, uh, like a whole word or a whole sentence, um, you might want to break those up into different meshes when you use this. I found that it doesn't quite work as well if you have lots and lots of different letters, different objects within the same object. And of course I can slide my oct tree depth, which you shouldn't really go beyond 7 or 8, otherwise it'll probably crash. Um, but you can adjust the scale, maybe it'll turn that up to 6. Of course you can see with 7 it gets really, really uh, dense, but of course you do probably don't want that dense of a mesh. That looks pretty good to me. I might hit apply. Now the one problem with the re remesh modifier is that it doesn't always act as efficiently as you might like, especially where it doesn't need to have extra faces. Um, you'll see that with my C and my G, because they are just extruded um, straight up and down on the Z or Z axis, we actually don't need that whole edge there, that whole uh, edge loop right there, or that one right there. There's no reason for those two, those two edges to exist right now, because that is just one flat side. So you could go ahead and delete the entire um, ring of faces, and then weld all of the um, vertexes together, and that would make a better, more efficient uh, mesh. Or you can just leave it as it is, it's up to you. But that is the remesh modifier. Um, it's not quite out in Blender yet, of course, um, but it will be in Blender 2.62, as well as some other features. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.